Hello students, in this video I will be explaining about transgenic plants and the methods that are employed in the production of transgenic plants and their applications. At first let us know what a transgenic plant is. A transgenic plant is a genetically modified plant that is a gene of interest or a foreign DNA which is known as transgene is inserted into its genome to get the desired characters. So let us list out what are the desired characters in a plant. For example, to improve the shelf life, to increase the yield, to get disease resistant plants to get plants that are tolerant to heat or cold and so on. So to get the desired characteristics in the plants, the gene of interest is inserted into its genome. Therefore, a plant which has transgene in its genome is called as transgenic plant. And the method that is used is recombinant DNA technology. By recombinant DNA technology, the transgene is inserted into the genome's plant and the plant which has transgene in its genome is called as transgenic plant. So to create transgenic plants, two methods are employed, vector-based gene transfer and secondly vectorless or direct gene transfer to introduce the transgene into the plant's genome these methods are used vector based and vectorless that is direct so in vector based biological vectors are used like bacteria and viruses and in vectorless there are two methods physical method and chemical method under physical method that is electroporation method and uh, micro injection micro projector and so on and chemical method polyethylene glycol method DEA methods in your syllabus you have only physical methods like electroporation and electroprojectile sorry, electroporation and microprojectile methods. So these two methods will be explained in the next video. Today let us study the vector-based gene transfer. Okay. In the vector based method, bacteria or viruses are used in transforming the plants. But viruses as these are ineffective in transforming the plants, these are not widely used, only bacteria are used in the transformation process, especially agrobacterium. is used in the transformation process. Agrobacterium is a soil born gram negative motile rod shaped bacteria belonging to the family Rhizobiaceae. So these bacteria are soil born gram negative motile rod shaped belonging to the family Rhizobiaceae. Here, two types of bacteria have been identified in the transformation process Agrobacterium tumefaciens, Agrobacterium rhizogenes. Agrobacterium tumefaciens carries Ti plasmid, that is tumor inducing plasmid, 
and it causes disease called as car crown gall disease in plants rhizogenes carries ri plasmid this is root inducing and it causes hairy root disease in plants so these are the two bacteria that are used in the transformation process of plants agrobacterium tumor officials is commonly used when compared to rhizogenes because rhizogenes is used only for the production of secondary metabolites agrobacterium tumor officials so before that let us know the structure of the plasmids which are called as vectors in the transformation process the vectors plasmid in agrobacterium tumor officials is of nopaline type and octopine type so these are the strains nopaline and octopine nopaline has only one tdna octopine has two tdns so now let us know the structure of uh, agrobacterium oh, sorry the vector ti plasmid this ti plasmid is about 200 kilo base pairs and it has different regions like tdna virulence region opaline metabolism region and ori cycle now let us study about these regions in detail this tdna is the one which is transferred into the plant's genome this tdna has aux gene cyp gene and ocs gene and these genes are flanked between left border and right border together all these constitute tdna outer to this region is virulence or ver genes and it has a ori site next opine metamorphism g this is the structure of pi plasmid the function of aux and cyt genes is to produce auxins and cytokines the hormones so these hormones help in the proliferation of the plant tissue usually in a normal plant when there is damage in the plant they start producing the damaged tissue start producing phenolic compounds called as acetosinidin and hydroxyacetosinidin so these phenolic compounds act as signals for attracting the agrobacterium tumor officials bacteria so when these signals are recognized by the bacteria they start moving towards the plant so they go there and they bind to the damaged plant tissues so this ox and side they start producing these genes producing the growth hormones they help in production of these hormones and these hormones help in the proliferation of the plant tissues damaged plant tissues that induces the formation of gall and this is called as tumor this tumor is called as crown gall tumor crown gall tumor 
and OCS. OCS is the gene which helps in the production of opines and agropines. Opine is amino acid derivative and this is sugar derivative, agropines. So these are utilized as carbon and energy source by the bacteria. So these hormones are uh, produced for the formation of crown gall and opines and agropines are utilized by the bacteria as the carbon and energy source. And virulence region, where are virulence genes? There are so many virulence genes, around nine word genes have been identified and these genes are uh, word A, C, B, D, 1, D, 2, G, E. So there are different types of uh, virulence uh, regions, virulence genes. These word genes help in the transfer of tDNA into the plant genome. So they help in the integration of this tDNA into the plant genome. Oocyte is required for the replication process. And opaline metabolism gene helps in the uptake and metabolism of these opines and agropines. So this is the structure of Ti plasmid. Okay. Now let us know how this infects the plant tissue. So when there is a damage in the plant tissue, they start moving towards the plant because of the production of phenolic acids by the damaged plant tissues. And once they go there, they bind or get attached to the plant cells, damaged plant cells with the help of carbohydrates, especially the cellulose fibers that are produced or synthesized by the bacterial cells. Once they get attached to the damaged cells, then the word genes get activated. So first word gene that gets activated is word A which is followed by word C. So this helps in the activation of C. Then it activates, these two activates D1 and D2. When these two get activated, they help in the production of single stranded tDNA. So D1, D2 help in the production of single stranded tDNA. They protect this and they help in the integration of this single stranded DNA into the plant genome. Now once single stranded tDNA is produced, this will bind to or attach to D2, word D2 to form a complex called as single standard DNA, tDNA and word into complex. Now this complex will move out from the bacterial cell with the help of word G proteins and this is transported with the help of word B into the plant cells. Once they move into the plasma membrane of the plant cell, there word E2 binds to this complex that is SSTDNA word E2. Now there are SSTDNA word E2 and word E2 complex. Now these two avoid the action of nucleases present in the plant cell and they help this to get integrated into the plant genome. Once they enter into the plasma membrane, then they enter through nuclear pore and then it helps in the integration of this tDNA into the plant genome. So it can go and get integrated anywhere in the plant genome. There is no uh, specific sequence. Wherever uh, it finds compatible, it will go and bind to the 
genome, plant genome. So this is how it happens in the plants. Now let us see how it is done in the laboratory for the production of transgenic plants. So this is the TI plasmid and this is the target gene. Now the target gene is inserted into the TI plasmid. This is target gene. So it is inserted into this and this is introduced into agrobacterium cell. Agrobacterium cell and now from this agrobacterium this is the culture plate where this is a normal plant. The leaf discs are taken from the normal plant and these leaf discs are co-cultured with the bacterial cells containing the target gene. As these bacteria can infect the plants, they infect them and this plate is then selected on selective medium to check the transformation of the cells. So once they are selected, the transformed leaf discs are induced to produce shoot, shoot production and finally are transformed, many transformed plants are obtained from this transformed explodes. So this is the procedure. Once I will repeat this TI plasmid and this is the target gene. The target gene is inserted in the TI plasmid and this vector is introduced into the agrobacterium cell and the agrobacterium cell is co-cultured with the leaf disc. When this uh, is cultured with the leaf disc, the agrobacterium cells infect the plant cells and these cells are selected on the selective media to identify the transformed cells on antibiotic media and the transformed cells are separated and these transformed explants are then induced for the production of shoot and these shoots are then uh, allowed to grow into plants. So this is the transformed plant. So this is the procedure of the production of transgenic plants in laboratory. So there are different applications and also limitations of this. As these agrobacterium uh, are uh, natural phytopathogens, they can effectively cause disease in the plants. They are called as natural genetic engineers. Therefore, they can infect the plant cells and large number of uh, DNA can also be used to infect the plants. Therefore, these are the applications and the uh, Limitations are like only dicotyledonous plants can be uh, used here for the transformation process but monocotyledonous plants uh, it is not possible when compared to dicotyledonous, dicotyledonous plants and one more is embryonic cells they are deeply embedded uh, in the layers it is difficult to infect the embryonic cells because embryonic cells can uh, get uh, they can uh, generate into a transform plant, but it is not possible with this. Thank you.